Hello again and welcome back to the Day of Daily Bible Study. Uh, today we're going to finish up this week by also finishing up uh, chapter 5 of the Gospel of Luke. Today we're going to start on uh, verse 33. Before we do that, let's pray. Uh, loving God, uh, we are so hard to please. Um, we want things this way, and then when they're that way, we want them some other way. Lord, help us to receive you as you really are and not get so caught up in our own you know, petty you know, desires that we forget that what really matters is you. Lord, we ask you to send your Holy Spirit to you upon us. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So this is just, this is a, a fascinating passage. And I, I just, uh, I keep coming back to it because it's just so evocative and also a little bit confusing. <laughs> so this is starting in verse uh, 33 where the Pharisees, they've been mad at Jesus for eating with the tax collectors and sinners. And it says, and they said to him, the disciples of John, I mean John the Baptist, often fast and offer prayers. The disciples of the Pharisees also do the same. But yours eat and drink. Jesus said to them, You cannot make the attendance of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them, can you? But the days will come, and when the bridegroom is taken away from them, then they will fast in those days. And he was also telling them a parable. No one tears a piece of cloth from a new garment and puts it on an old garment. Otherwise he will uh, both tear the new, and the piece from the new will not match the old. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise the new wine will burst the skins, will be spilled out, and the skins will be ruined. But new wine must be put into fresh wineskins. And no one, after drinking old wine, wishes for new, for he says, the old is good enough. Um, it's funny, I find myself, you know, uh, because I'm, like I said, said several times, I am less familiar with Luke than I am with the other Gospels. And so sometimes I, I made just now, in my own mind, a jump, assuming that there was something in this passage that isn't, which is in, and I believe Matthew and Luke, or Matthew and Mark, you have um, Jesus saying, you, he says, what will I compare this generation to? You're like children in a marketplace, and you complain that when you sing happy songs, people don't dance. And when you sing sad songs, they don't, they don't weep. Uh, that's not in Luke, at least it's not in here anyway. Um, but even still, the main, the main point is still the same, which is um, you know, God is doing something new in Christ. And if we, are, if we blind ourselves to it, uh, or we have unex, unreasonable expectations for it, uh, we will not benefit ourselves. And the first one is to say, you know, they, they're looking and saying, John the Baptist's disciples, they pra- prayed and fasted. We pray and fast. That's the thing that throughout the whole Old Testament, this is what the people of God do when they want to seek the Lord. They pray and they fast. And so John's disciples do it. We as disciples do it. Yours don't. Yours eat and drink and celebrate. And there's no precedent throughout the Old Testament saying that, you know, if you're seeking the Lord, you should, you know, uh, celebrate and feast. And Jesus is saying this because they don't need to seek. They don't need to seek the kingdom right now because the kingdom's here with them. The bridegroom is here. You can't, you know, if you got, you take the bridal party at a wedding and say, you've got to make sure you don't eat and you better keep a strict ascetic lifestyle because you don't want to overindulge. And they're like, we are at a wedding. This is our friend's wedding. We are going to eat. We are going to drink. We are going to celebrate as long as we need to. And Jesus is saying, you know, this is, this, this is what they're at. They're eating and they're drinking, not because they don't see any value in fasting, but because they're at a wedding right now because I'm here. And eventually I'm going to go away. And when I'm gone, then they're not going to be at a wedding anymore. And that will be the time to pray and fast and weep and things like that. Um, but he says, you can't you know, pay attention to what's going on because something's happening here that doesn't fit into your old ways of thinking. And then he compares this beautiful par- comparison with uh, you know, wineskins and clothing. And he says, if you take new wine that's still fermenting, that still has all this gas in it, you need to have a wineskin that can stretch and can move and all the rest. An old wineskin can, can do it because an old wineskin you know, is pretty well what it is and it's not going to be able to flex anymore. And he says, if you put new wineskin into an old, if you put new wine into an old wineskin, uh, it is going to destroy the wineskin and it's going to waste the wine. If you put a, a patch on a, on a, a new p- a cloth patch on, a, on an old piece of clothing, but it's new fabric you're putting on there, it is going to, one, not solve the problem because it's going to pull away from it, and two, you know, you're going to destroy or make worse what you had before. Well, Jesus is saying, you know, you've got to understand that when God does something new, it's not going to fit neatly in the way things have been done before. And... Um, and that's vitally important because oftentimes, you know, so uh, I'm a pastor of the Adventist Church. I imagine that most people who watch this are members of the Adventist Church. Um, we are a long, old, traditional denomination in America, at least. Um, we've been around for a while. We have ways we've done things. And sometimes there's always that question that gets raised of, does the fact that we have a relatively long history in this country um, 
does that get in the way sometimes of being able to see what God is doing? Now, maybe God's not doing something so fundamentally new that, that breaks things or down our, our conceptions like he's doing here. Um, but is it possible that God wants to do something and because we're so caught up in this is what the church is supposed to look like, this is what the service is supposed to look like because it's looked like it my entire life and it looked like it for most of my parents' life as well. Are we? Does that get in the way of us saying, what's God doing today? There's a, I mean... The whole COVID-19 thing has been a pain across the board. But one of the silver linings, I think, is it has forced churches and congregations to try to do something new. Now, some churches have done that new thing very well. Some have done it less well. But all of them have had to do something new. We have, we have All of a sudden, we're put in a situation where same old, same old, the way we've always done it simply would not work. And we've had to try to find new wineskins and new patches to be able to put on things. And, and the fact of the matter is, even if some of the things we've tried over this last year and some months uh, doesn't remain as part of what we do, it is still a good thing that we have, it's still a good thing that we have tried it, because we hopefully, it will sensitize us to what is God doing, and we might be more willing to try something new in the future. So that's all I have for today. Come back again uh, next week, and we'll continue on with the Gospel according to Luke. Have a good day.